All right. Well, we are recording. I'm glad you guys have uh, joined us for our ongoing coaching meeting today. And Jim, by popular request, <laughs> Mark has mentioned it, as have several others have said, you've got to have Jim come and uh, share this story with you about this particular person. And so uh, Jim is going to share that, maybe some of kind of his backstory as to how he ended up talking to this guy. And just, Jim, anything else related to the story that you think would encourage the group? Uh, some of us that have heard the story have found it to be super powerful and encouraging. And so we want everybody here on the call to hear it, and then we're recording it and make sure it gets out to a lot more people. So Jim, take it away, brother. Hey, right on. Hey, I want to share two context things, two stories, and one of them is the main story, uh, and then one lesson that I've been learning in this. And the context, if you guys have been around for three months or four months or so, hey, I taught, I think it was in August, and I just shared, honestly, that a year in, I thought things would be going way better than I thought they'd be going. And, um, and I just say that just an encouragement in terms of, I think one of the big things that's so huge is, uh, is faithfulness to just keep on going. And so as we've seen stories, a lot of them really have happened uh, since going for a year. And I think God's just saying, man, you think that's good after a year? Hey, there's so much more if you'll just keep going. And so I just want to give a encouragement that, uh, man, six months and nine months in, I'm like, God, when are you going to, I had some stories that anyways, didn't materialize. Now they are starting to do that. So um, that's one. And second is, I think the last two speakers, unless I'm missing one, were guys that have led massive movements in other parts of the world. Uh, and I've not done that at all. But here was the thing is I just was a student with you guys and listening to them is um, both of them, the majority of what they shared was their internal journey, uh, not just the results of what they saw. And, um, and, I, and I think for me, one of the things that's been huge for me and, and now doing this about a year and a half is, is God has to radically transform your view of what success is. And um, I, was it Steve a couple times ago? He, you know, they writ, wrote a book and the first half of the book was like not about the crazy ministry stuff they, they did. And I remember thinking, why don't you just start the book at the halfway point when the good stuff started happening? And I get it now, like the journey is part of it. You can't just fast forward to that. And same with Victor John. Uh, when he spoke about, you know, this movement of millions, like 12 million people or so getting baptized in India, I'm ready to hear about that part. And he spent at least 80% of his time with us talking about the first five years when nothing happened. And, uh, and I, I, I just think that's a reality in the world, at least I live in, like if God, if you can't do it like by this weekend or at least this fall, uh, Lord, I'm not patient enough for it. And, and I'm, God's changing me from the inside out in terms of being patient, waiting, and trusting the long game, and not asking, God, what can you do this fall or even this year? God, what do you want to do over the next 10, 20 years? So, uh, which I think is something guys with movements are seeing. Um, so, uh, two two stories. We're in this uh, neighborhood called Luce Duran um, in uh, North County, San Diego. And um, uh, if you've read the book, Experiencing God, then you know this this truth. And if you haven't read it, repent, become a Christian, and then read it. And um, it's, uh, but he has this, this truth of, hey, we don't go start ministry. We go find where God's working and then we join him in it. And um, I think he was preaching DMM long before, uh, you know, we were, we were doing, in fact, you read his books and you go, they were doing something very, very similar, I think, to this in, in Canada. <clears throat> so, so with that in mind, though, as we've been trying to, you know, plant a church very differently than we planted churches in the past, been DMM stuff. Um, first met a guy and there was, Christian music playing across the street at this park and um, it was in Spanish. And so I was walking by and I just said, you know, do you, do you speak Spanish? And are you speaking English? And he said, yeah. And I said, Hey, I like your music. Um, and we started talking for a second. And he says, his name was Carlos. And I said, tell me a little bit about yourself, Carlos. And this is what he said. He said, Jim, I'm an evangelist living in this neighborhood, believing God's going to bring a revival here. I said, no way. That's me. <laughs> well, I don't live here, but I go, that's exactly what I am. What I want to see happen, and and long story short on that one, he and I have become friends, and I'm taking him through the DMM training, and it's one thing for him to be this Spanish speaker that speaks English in a neighborhood that's extremely Hispanic right across the street. It's another thing is I've taken him through each training. We're not done with it yet, but each time he goes, Jim, can we go through the training quicker? Uh, I've already taken three groups through the last session. I mean, so he's he'll have finished probably three DMM trainings. By the time we finish this one, and here's just the thought on this, the, the, the truth is, 
is God knew this guy, Carlos, lived in this park or you know, across the street from the park long before I felt even led to go there. And, uh, and I, as I was prayer walking months ago, it was this guy where you're calling us to lead our teams and start doing ministry. God knew we were going to connect. And just to say, hey, open your eyes to, hey, God, what have you already been doing? We're not starting something. We're just joining you in something you've already been doing. Does that make sense? So, and uh, man, it's so exciting. This guy is totally a partner. Uh, and I think we're going to do ministry for a long time. So that's one story. The other one that people have requested, that's just, I'm still blown away by it and I'm still living it out and I have stuff to add from yesterday um, is, so in this journey of DMM, I uh, heard that stat of, you know, it takes $1.55 million per baptism in North America and just said, I don't want to be a part of the problem. Um, and so I would love it if I didn't get paid by my church and I could figure out another way of doing it. And, uh, and Chris, about a year ago said, Jim, I've got a solution and he shared it with me. And so I'm on this journey. And some of you guys are on this as well, doing some very part-time real estate stuff. But part of that, what it requires for us is uh, we text uh, maybe 1,500 to 2,000 people a week. Um, and, uh, and the text is, you know, hey, we want to buy your house. And people respond. You can do it where you send out like 100 in a minute. And so uh, they, come, they come in really, really quick. And through this texting, met a guy, his property we wanted to buy around the corner. And he uh, found out that he went to um, t- crazy ministry, by the way, in this thing. So there was three, we had people in our church last week all the time through through this. I mean, it's, it's cool. We're going to pray for people all the time. But uh, <clears throat> he said, found out that he went to a, a Russian Baptist church in the area. And he said, hey, my partner uh, can show you this property. And I said, well, how about your partner shows my partner? Because I had a guy that was going to go see it. And he said, okay. So my partner goes and see it. And my partner calls me and says, Jim, it's a cool property. We should get it. And you're not going to believe this guy's story, but he's from the Russian mafia. And years ago, he came to Christ and he led like 500 of his Russian mafia buddies to Christ. And at that point, I heard that and I thought, who cares about the property anymore? Uh, I got to go meet this guy. So I had texted him before. His name is Ian, but we you know, never really had a conversation. I said, Ian, I just heard a bit of your story. Um, I want to meet you in person. I'm a local pastor in town. And he said, let's meet today. And um, I said, I got a packed day. I got one hour open all day. He's all, great. Come on over during that time. He gives me an address. It's five minutes from my front door. I'm like, that's convenient. And so I drive drive over to his house. And I'm driving over there. And right, we're all thinking thinking the same way now. We're thinking DMM. And I'm like, yeah, if we're going to have a movement in this area, someone's got to reach the Russians. I just found the guy. <laughs> so that's what I'm thinking as I'm going over there. And, uh, um, and I'm going to cast this vision to him. You know, if he can reach mafia guys, he can get this. So we're sitting down um, at his kitchen table. And he's like, tell me about your church, Jim. And I said, hey, we have a real heart for multiplication. I told him we planted several churches in the first couple of years. And he breaks in and he goes, the ministry I'm involved in uh, is also really big on multiplication. It's called disciple making movement. And I go, DMM? And he's like, you know, DMM? I go, yeah, it's wrecked my life for the last year and a half. And, uh, and he goes, no way. And he goes on to share that over the last couple of years, uh, he, they've planted thousands and thousands of, of groups, mostly in, in, uh, in Slavic countries over in Russia, that part of the world, um, and, uh, and thousands of churches over in that area. Um, and he spends nine to 10 months a year training people now in DMM, he, he uh, is a Olympic black belt Taekwondo guy. And one of their major strategies is fitness classes and doing that. And then he says this, and this is where I almost not, fell out of my chair. So I'm already like, going, oh my goodness, this is nuts. And then he says, and Jim, here's the, here's the, if there's a crazier part, here it is. God just told me, Ian, I don't want you traveling for at least the next six months. I'm doing a work in North County and I will bring you the workers. I'm going, what? And uh, he's like, so Jim, whatever you're doing, I'm in. Let's roll. And uh, um, and so he, we, we're, you know, we're at this park three times a week. He joins us. And um, and I had, and so, and he's just this incredible mentor counselor of talking about, you know, how, how these things happen. He's taught me so much. He's walking around one-on-one with the people on our teams as we do prayer walking and teaching them stuff. And then I had, I I picked him up at the airport a couple of days ago. We're that kind of, we're like besties, right? We're more of the airport guy. And, uh, um, and we decided we we're gonna have breakfast the next day and we had breakfast. And he said, 
Jim, you've shared with me your end vision, but that's too intimidating uh, for people. We need to talk about next year. And he said, that end vision is good, but we need to talk about what could happen next year. And he said, I think we need to have a faith goal, but also one that's like super, like could happen. He's like, um, I'm gonna throw out a number and you're gonna say it's too low, but I'm gonna throw a number. This is how many teams uh, I think we need. And he was, he's really big on it. He said, there's three things. There's teams, there's groups, there's churches. And he said, you're in the season now where your goal is to raise up teams. Um, and then, so it starts going by multiplication. You know, as you're finding groups and stuff, but, but doing teams. And he said, I think, hey, God could surely work in this way way more, but at least we would see 50 teams between Oceanside and Vista uh, by 20, in, in the year 2021. And uh, I sat across from him at Denny's and was like, you said I'm the guy that has intimidating <laughs> goals, 50 groups. We have one right now. And that one is even suspect, <laughs> you know? And, uh, and, and he went on and said, what are you talking about? He's like, we, this, this is just ready to take off. You've been raising these guys up. They're all ready to start groups and you don't need, or, or teams. He said, you don't need teams. You just need guys that have cast a vision and a training of how to start a team. And if you have that, you've got a team and, uh, and you walk with them and coach them through how to do that. And so uh, anyways, I, that was, that was like Saturday. And, um, and so then we said, well, we got to get together with some people to start talking about this some more. And so yesterday, myself and Jim Thurber, who's I'm like right below me on mine, he was there too. But several of us just met to start talking about this. And, um, and we just said, hey, and he made a big point. He just said, hey, we're going kind of quick. Hey, I, uh, I do think God wants to do 50 teams in 2021. Hey, we need to get more people around the table. And so January 9th, we've got a meeting and everybody who knows anything about DMM, we're going to invite to and start a lot, having them be engaged in hey, what this vision could look like in terms of this next year and beyond. So, uh, so anyways, that lesson I just said of, right, God's got people that he's preparing. Um, it could be that, that uh, God's going to bring people into your life to do it. It could be, I feel like this, or God's going to use you and he's going to, you're just a spoke in the wheel and he's going to bring you into someone else's story, you know, to help bring this thing together. And so uh, anyways, I'm just in awe of what God's done. And here, I'd say my last thing would be, so here, here's what this has got me doing. Like on, on Sunday morning, uh, I'm prayer walking um, in this neighborhood. And I asked this, this high school kid, hey, can we pray for you in his driveway? And he says, there's actually a church service going on in my, in my garage. And I'm like, oh, and I start listening in. And it's, it's like a church where it was all in Spanish, but they just, the guy's screaming and he's got a microphone and he didn't need one. And, uh, but I'm like, shoot, this is around the corner from the park. So I, we spent the next 20 minutes uh, sitting in a service that was very different than, uh, than anything I'd ever be a part of. But got this kid's number and I'm connecting now Carlos to this guy, Jose, and go, shoot, God knew that there was a church around the corner that's not doing very well and has a microphone that can reach the whole neighborhood, even though it shouldn't. Uh, and God, might that be a part of your journey as well? Okay, I'm going to sit through sit through this a little bit. So it's, it's changing the way I look around and see how God's already moving. So I think that's all I have. That's my story. Jim. Thank you so much for sharing. You guys, wasn't that encouraging? <laughs> I just, I mean, Jim, and, and Jim, why, if, if somebody wants to have encouraging stories on a regular basis like you are, what would you say is the key to having these encouraging stories? I think I have an idea, but if somebody says, Jim, the stuff you're describing, going where God's working, all these, you have all these stories. Jim, why are you always having stories to tell us? Uh, well, so for sure, we're praying. We're praying a lot. We need to be praying more, but uh, I sure think uh, you can't skip that. You can do a lot of things after prayer. You can't do anything before prayer, but we were praying before the good stories happened. So the other piece would be, Hey, you must go out among the lost mm -hmm. and uh, just be in places with the in Ian's teaching me that movements happen when you get people all the time, constantly thinking on mission. But he said, you, you, people don't live that way until they first intentionally step into times where they're doing that. And so like mission trips, right? You, I was a youth pastor forever and we took people on mission trips and they're like a different person in Mexico than they are here. Well, anytime I think you go out among the lost, you start walking around or whatever that looks like. And uh, with the intention of having spiritual conversations with people, it's like a mission trip. And I think it, it, it recircuits how you see things and every opportunity that you have in life. And so 
you've got to go do that. And the secret for us on that of getting, I was doing it, but getting our whole team doing it is we have to meet together to go do that. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, we have three different times right now where we have intentional times where people from our team and they don't all come on the same day, but come out and we know there's going to be groups of two walking around um, having conversations with people. And then the other days of the week are usually the follow-up days that we have with the persons of peace that we're funding. Um, and yeah, if you're, you know, you're frustrated with not getting people to do it. First of all, you gotta ask, are you doing it? Mm -hmm. But then second, you gotta get them to do it with you and just let them watch and then give them like really softball, small parts, like you close in prayer at the end of this thing, help them get a win in this thing going slowly, you know, so they gain confidence in it. So yeah, you got, you got, we say here, right. Is you're, you're only playing games to go to the lost. I think that's true. It's, uh, it's not real till we, till we start getting out there. And Jim, you're going out among the lost with the mindset of God is at work, like experiencing God, God is at work in the world around you. And you're looking to join him where he's working. So you have eyes to see where he's working. And so you talk to a guy in a park or you were texting a guy and you yeah. end up talking to him. So you guys, I just, that, that was somewhat obvious <laughs> what Jim shared, but I wanted him to share it just because if we want to have stories like Jim sharing, we need to pray, but we've got to be out among the lost. We've got to be talking to people. We've got to have that fundamental belief that God's at work in the world around us, and we're looking to join him where he's working. But we need to be thinking in that way.